Hello and welcome to IT Leader Digital and IT Strategy course from One World Training. One World Training is a global training, business simulation, and training company having its offices in the USA, UK, the Netherlands, India, Malaysia, UAE, South Africa, and many more countries globally. We provide training in IT business management, project management, ISO standards, GDPR, and over 150 plus other trainings for individuals and organizations. One World Training delivers its courses in five ways, public classroom based, online from home or work, e-learning, a blended approach of self-paced e-learning with in-person support for instruction, or at the user's location with on-site team training for private and government organizations. One World Training is an authorized training center and endorsed by leading global professional bodies. For ITIL in particular, One World Training is an authorized training organization appointed by Axel and PeopleCert. About myself, my name is Murali. My full name is Murali Dhargadam. I'm a certified trainer and course advisor for ITIL4, projects management professional, projects in controlled environments, managing successful programs, value-driven, evolving, responsive and integrated service management, and Exin Agile Scrum Master. I have several years of experience in IT and project management, and I work with global teams in the USA, Western Europe, Canada, India, Southeast Asia, and Australia. I use my real world work experience to deliver my trainings, supporting diverse industries in leading tier one global organizations. I'm a computer engineer by education, a certified corporate trainer and coach. I have multi-domain experience as a trainer and subject matter expert in areas of IT service management, software project and program management. We would first like to acknowledge Axelos as we have produced their material here in this course. ITIL is a registered trademark of Axelos Limited. ITIL infrastructure library is a registered trademark of Axelos Limited. The SOAL logo is also a trademark of Axelos Limited. Let us understand the ITIL 4 certification scheme. We have the ITIL foundation as the starting point, followed by four certifications above it for the managing professional qualification and two certifications about the foundation for the strategic leader certification. The managing professional is attained by completing ITIL foundation and the remaining four, which are ITIL specialist create deliverance support, ITIL specialist drive stakeholder value, ITIL specialist high velocity IT, and ITIL strategist direct plan and improve. The strategic leader or the SL qualification is attained by completing ITIL foundation and two other certifications, namely ITIL strategist direct plan and improve and ITIL leader digital and IT strategy. Those who are V3 qualified, such as V3 expert with 22 credits or V3 with at least 17 credits may write just one exam, which is the managing professional transition exam or the MPT exam to obtain the ITIL for managing professional qualification without having to write the remaining five exams, namely the foundation and the four for the managing professional. Relation to the publications. There is one publication for each of the ITIL exam, which means there is one publication each for foundation, for create deliverance support, drive stakeholder value, high velocity IT, direct plan and improve, digital and IT strategy. The practices are published separately, a total of 34 practices. There is no separate publication for the managing professional because that is covered through the foundation, create deliverance support, drive stakeholder value, high velocity IT and direct plan and improve. Each managing professional and strategic leader syllabus includes content from the exam specific publications such as direct plan and improve and practice publications such as continual improvement. Each exam therefore has some content based on its relevant practices. Not all the 34 practices are covered in each of these exams, but only some of them relevant to that particular certification. Each syllabus is also explicit about what parts of which practices are included, which means not everything about a practice is included, but only some sections within a specific practice are included. 
Each book includes some non-examinable contents. For example, the DITS manual. Not the entire DITS manual is relevant for the exam because some of it is non-examinable content. There are seven practices applicable to DITS. Number one, architecture management. Two, portfolio management. Three, strategy management. Four, measurement and reporting. Five, risk management. Six, workforce and challenge management. Seven, service financial management. The DITS syllabus includes content from the DITS publication and the seven practice publications. The syllabus is explicit about what parts of which practices are included and the DITS book and practices also contain non-examinable content. The ITIL Leader Digital and IT Strategy module is for IT and business directors, heads of department, aspiring C-suite professionals, and other business leaders across the organization who are looking for guidance that will help them craft a digital vision, shape IT and business strategy, and drive organizational change. GITS will provide you with the skills and knowledge to develop a cross-organizational digital strategy, craft a digital vision, drive operational excellence, respond to digital disruption, enable a sustainable business, strategically manage risk, develop digital leaders for the future. The learning objectives. Demonstrate the use of ITIL guiding principles in digital and IT strategy decisions and activities. Understand why organizations need to change the way they do business in markets disrupted by digital information technology and relate this to the concepts of strategy they will need to master as they make these changes. Relate the concepts of digital and IT strategy, the service value system and the service value chain and explain how they work together to create value in markets being transformed by digital and information technology. Understand how an organization uses digital and IT strategy to remain viable in environments disrupted by digital technology. Understand strategic approaches made possible by digital and information technology to achieve customer or market relevance and operational excellence. Understand the risks and opportunities of digital and IT strategy. Understand the steps and techniques involved in defining and advocating for a digital and IT strategy and understand how to implement a digital and IT strategy. The agenda or the list of topics for this course. It is split into three sections, part one, part two, and part three. Part one includes one section, section number two, which is about the digital and IT strategy. Part two includes sections three to eight, which are the strategy journey. The strategy journey uses the continual improvement model with the seven steps. Part three is about the strategic capabilities, sections nine to 12. The current recording is about the DITS training program and the course. This will be followed by the introduction section, number one, which is not part of the exam syllabus, but good to know anyway. The exam syllabus begins from section number two, which is key concepts, which is part of the digital and IT strategy, part one of the DITS manual. From section three onwards, we have the part two of the DITS manual, which is about the strategy journey. And that runs from section three to eight. And we can see clearly here, sections three to eight are on the lines of the continual improvement model. Beginning with the question, what is the vision? Followed by, where are we now? Where do we want to be and how do we get there? Take action, did we get there? And how do we keep the momentum going? The first assignment is included in section number three, what is the vision? The second assignment is part of section four, where are we now? The third assignment is part of section six, take action. And the fourth assignment is part of section eight, how do we keep the momentum going? You might see some asterisks marked for section number two, section number three, and section number five. These mean that in the DITS exam, as many as 18 questions of the 30 questions are likely from sections two and three and five. Finally, we have part three, which is strategic capabilities, sections nine to 12, digital leadership, managing innovation and emerging technologies, managing strategic risk and structuring for digital business. Outside of the 
this manual, we also have the practice guidances. And we will cover the seven practices in section 13. The assessment approach to obtain the DITS qualification. It consists of practical assignments, four in number, based on a single case study, followed by an examination. It is mandatory to pass the four assignments before being allowed to write the written examination. And completion of both will lead to obtaining the Digital and IT Strategy Certification. A bit more detail about the two-part assessment leading to the DITS certification. Part one is the practical assignments. These are in-class, in-group, four assignments based on a case study. However, for individual e-learners such as you, it will be not in-class, in-group, but you can do it independently on your own and submit the responses for the assignments. One hour generally per assignment. In case of group, then the last assignment, the fourth assignment is for one and a half hours. There are five assessment criteria. Eight marks per criterion, thus a total of 40 marks. The pass mark is 30 or above out of 40. Bloom's level four is used, which is analyzing and judging whether a course of action is effective and appropriate based on a case study. It's an open book exam, meaning the DITS publication, the practice publications and any other material may be used. Part two, following the successful passing of the practical assignments, you will be eligible to write the multiple choice written exam. It is for one hour. And if the exam is not taken in the native language, then 25% extra time is allowed. For example, if a person is non-English and if they're taking the English exam, English exam, then they get 15 minutes extra. And your native language will be mentioned when you register for the exam with PeopleCert. 30 questions, multiple choice, one mark each, no negative marking, 21 out of 30 or 70% to pass. Bloom's level two, comprehension and Bloom's level three application are used for testing the candidate. It's a closed book exam. More about the assessments. The trainer evaluates the outputs of the assignments, all the four that is. In particular, the completeness of the results or the scope and also the quality, meaning relevance to the case study and correct application of the ITIL recommendation. It is important to note these two parameters for the successful completion of the assignments. Meaning, it is important that the responses are relevant to the case study and the responses are also relevant to the ITIL DITS publication and the practice publications. And also, the responses should be complete and correct. Individual or group skills and behavior are not evaluated. Of course, for e-learners, it is a single person submission and not a group. The marks are shared by all members of the team who participated in case it's a group assignment in a live class. If somebody misses a group exercise, then an individual written assignment would have to be done by that person. The assessment criteria for all the four assignments, total 40 marks and requires 30 or more to pass. For all the four assignments, meaning for each one of them, there are two marks per assignment related to the principles. Relate the ITIL guiding principles to all aspects of the digital and IT strategy. So these two marks are reserved for each of the four assignments, therefore a total of eight marks. Plus, apart from these eight marks, there are marks for each of the individual assignments and eight marks for each of the individual assignments. Therefore, eight for the principles in total and eight each for the four assignments make it 40 marks, requiring 30 to pass. The assignments are as follows. Number one, use a digital positioning tool to determine the appropriate position for a digital organization. Assignment number two, assess strategic approaches for digital organizations. Number three, apply various approaches to strategy coordination and implementation. And number four, know how to analyze VUCA factors and address them 
in a digital and IT strategy. VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. We are going to learn about VUCA in this course. The case study. There are three ficti fic fictitious or fictional companies involved in a service relationship. MCL, which is a language learning center. TNH, which is a new hospitality company with hotels and resorts. And Interlearn, which is a software startup. Read the case study in full. Select the company you prefer. For example, you may prefer TNH or Interlearn or MCL as your chosen company because the practical assignment groups will be formed based on your preferences, your chosen company. This does not apply for individual e-learning, meaning as individual in e-learning, if you prefer, for example, TNH, then you have to respond to all the four assignments considering the responses from a TNH perspective. On the other hand, if you select MCL, then you have to respond to all the questions within all assignments from an MCL perspective and similarly for Interlearn. You will not be allowed to change your company preference for individual assignments. You need to use the same company for all the four assignments. However, you must read the information from the case study for all the three companies. There is also some additional information in the case study related to a risk report concerning all the three companies. There is more about this coming up to give you clarity about the assignments. And note that there is also a separate recording available in your online access to this course explaining the case study and how to respond to each of the ass assignments in brief. And you will be able to download the case study as well as the response forms for each of the assignments anytime from your online access. The rules and recommendations for practical assignments are as follows. Generally, you will see the group related policies. The work will be done in groups, in breakout groups, and each group will focus on one company from the case study based on their preferences. It is an open book assignment and feel free to use any materials you have. Of course, for e-learners, the group concept doesn't apply. They will be doing each assignment on their own at a time. As you see at the bottom, for e-learning, assignments will be need to be submitted at various points during the course. You have 30 to 40 minutes for discussion and five to 10 minutes to present the results if it's a live class. However, if you're an e-learner, then you would spend about an hour or more as uh, convenient to you and you can respond to them. And uh, we will explain to you how the responses need to be submitted. Use the basic template to respond or make up your own. For e-learners, a specific template will have to be used. You will not be allowed to use your own template for the response. One of the participants makes notes and presents the results. We will also provide a basic personal takeaway form. The takeaway form filling is optional for your own use for things which may you want to implement after the training is over in your own work environment. However, we will be interested in knowing what were your takeaways. The takeaways are not used for the assessment. A new member of the group has to present each of the assignments and the group to submit their work to the trainer at the end of each assignment. You will be provided clarity as an individual e-learner, the logistics for submitting the assignment responses. This is a view about the personal takeaway form, which is optional for submission and not used for evaluation. Your personal notes from the practical assignments and the course. It's a starting point for the improvements in your company, not included in the assessment. It includes notes on strategy design steps, methods and techniques used, challenges faced, where to apply in your own company and who should be involved from your company. We will now discuss the DIT syllabus based marks allocation for the written exam. If you notice, the DIT exam has 30 marks in total, requiring 21 to pass out of 30. And the marks are allocated 6 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5 plus 3 plus 5. The learning outcomes are 
understand why organizations need to change the way they do business in markets disrupted by digital information technology and relate this to the concepts of strategy that they will need to master as they make these changes. Next, relate the concepts of digital and ID strategy, the service value system and the service value chain and explain how they work together to create value in markets being transformed by digital and information technology. Understand how an organization uses digital and ID strategy to remain viable in environments disrupted by digital technology. Understand strategic approaches made possible by digital and information technology to achieve customer or market relevance and operational excellence. Also understand the risks and opportunities of digital and ID strategy. Understand the steps and techniques involved in defining and advocating for a digital and ID strategy. Understand how to implement a digital and ID strategy. And lastly, about three to four marks of the 30 may be expected from the practices, making it a total of 30. Let us look at the structure of the practice guides. Each practice guides starts with chapter one, which is general introduction, but we are more concerned from chapter two onwards shown here. Chapter two is about the general information about that practice. Chapter three is about value streams and processes. Chapter four, organizations and people. Chapter five, information and technology dimension. Chapter six, partners and suppliers dimensions, which means from chapter three to six, it is about the four dimensions for that practice, the four dimensions of service management. And for the DITS exam from the practices, only sections 2.1 and 2.4 are covered, which is the per practice purpose and description and the practice success factors. Every practice has two or three or maybe four practice success factors. Therefore, the bold underlined items 2.1 and 2.4 are the only sections included in the exam syllabus for the DITS exam. For the other certifications from the managing professional side, it is possible that, and also from the DPI, direct plan and improve, it is possible that some other sections are also relevant for the exams, for the practices. It is also important to note which sections in the manual are included in the exam and which are not. So here we see the sections which are not included in the exam. And there are several of them which may be skipped during your preparation for the exam. However, we do recommend that we you'd study them for better learning. Section one is introduction out of syllabus. Section 214, Internet of Things, section 27, and so on. Note that 282 would mean 2.8.2. .2. 2.8 would mean 2.8, 2.14 would mean 2.1.4. However, we have specifically marked items such as 2.10.1 because it is 2.10.1 and not 2.1.0.1. So it will be very clear to you which sections are not part of the syllabus. This one 5.121-3 means 5.121, 5.122 and 5123 all are excluded from the syllabus. And there are several sections continuing further. And that brings us to the, what is included in the DITS training and syllabus. Thank you.